Welcome back. I'm Emily at Emily's Podcast, Tribute to All Little Angels. Part 2, Episode 2 of Refresh Our Memory. Continuing from last week on June 10, 2021, at 3.32 p.m., I sent a private message to the woman who wrote her comments on the Cemetery Cover Up Facebook page. I wanted to reach out to her to let her know, yes, we are willing to meet her at the cemetery with the news stations. I think it's a great idea, and I'm willing to try anything and everything. I told her I had things going on in our ordinary lives, and we are all concerned about the flooding in the cemetery, and we do need to express it. Then I got on the Facebook Cemetery cover-up page to send the woman a message to check her private messages. At 7.37 p.m., I'm talking to a friend on the phone, and my phone kept being interrupted by an audio call, but for some reason, it wouldn't connect. It is from the woman. She sent a message saying, We can post on Marketplace to see if we can get help to fill in dirt on the graves that are low and holding water. We can also ask if someone can help with the topsoil to spread it out. We can post this on the Moore Facebook page. The city may stop us from doing this, so we have to make sure we don't bash the city when asking. We can come across as we are trying to help. Be the good guy, and then if they stop us, they will become the asses. I sent her a message back giving her my phone number for her to call for her and I to talk. At 8.14 p.m., she did call. We talked for hours, and the conversation was emotional. We were able to express what each other has gone through with the city. She did mention her mother had worked on this, trying to get something done. I told her my story, and she said, I know how that city is. My mother worked on this for 11 years for my grandfather, and my mother passed away two, two and a half years ago. I said, I've been working on it for six years. But when the COVID hit us, it slowed everything way down. But I still continued to send letters and to put ads in the newspapers. The woman then said, When I got up this morning, the post your niece has on the cemetery page appeared on my phone screen. And I don't know why, but I messaged. I don't know what I was writing. I believe it was my mother. It was a force with me of my mom. She wouldn't let me leave it alone. She sent me to you to help Megan. And by this time, I'm crying. And she was too. I told her Megan has guided me through this. So how do I walk away? How do I walk away knowing what I know? The woman said, you're not going to. I will help you. I said, oh my gosh, you were sent to me. She said, I was sent this morning to help you. My mom was a strong force with me, and I had to reach out. And I'm so happy you did. Thank you so much. She then asked me some questions. Do you have those pictures, and how far do they go back? I said, I have taken pictures since the day we laid Megan to rest. I have hundreds and hundreds of pictures. She said, you know, I am a professional photographer. I can look at a picture and tell if they are real or tampered with or cropped or whatever. I can overlay a picture and tell exactly where the headstone should lay. I can tell the angle the picture was taken on. I said, I don't know how to crop pictures. My pictures are 100% legit. She asked, when can we meet for me to see the pictures? 
I said, whenever you are ready, call me. You have my number now. Call me and we can meet. She said, I have things to do tomorrow, but I will call you Saturday or Sunday. We talked of how far we lived from the cemetery. I said, call me when you're ready and thank you so much. I can't wait to get started. She said, me neither. We have a little time. We will do this right. Then she shared what we could do. Then she said, my mama and Megan sent me to you and you to me. Then she mentioned, while my mom was at one end of the cemetery trying to get something done, you were at the front side and neither one of you knew it. Wow, was all I could think. And then a short time later, we hung up. Madison said, I haven't seen you this happy in a long time. I looked over at her and said, finally, finally, someone else has been complaining. At 10.05 p.m., I called my niece, Jen, real quick to let her know what was going on. Then I called my friend back to let him know what the woman had said. And of course, he gave me a piece of advice, as he always has. And I have carried it with me. The first time he told me that when, was when we first started this. Trust no one. And moving on now to June 11, 2021. When I woke up this morning, I felt a familiar feeling. I didn't cry. I didn't have a tight chest. My gut didn't feel sick. I feel good. And of course, I thank God and my angels. I started thinking about the conversation between the woman and myself. And it's just so awesome to hear from someone who's gone through the same thing. We really do meet people for reasons. And I can honestly say this woman took a heavy load off of me. So thank you for that. June 12th, 2021. My fingers are crossed today that this woman does call. But at least if she doesn't get back with me, I will take her advice. I may not use her to overlay a picture or pictures, but I will have a professional photographer overlay Megan's pictures. I haven't heard anything from her yet, so I messaged her at 2.38 p.m. I wrote, just checking in with you, a reminder, whenever you're ready to go to the cemetery, I'm ready. Have a good afternoon. At 6.53 p.m., it seems like it's been a long day, and I have not heard anything from her yet. I pray this is not another slap in the face. 7.33 p.m., Zoe and I left to go to the cemetery. It seemed as it was an urgency to get out there today. But as I sat with Megan and Wyatt, I thought, gosh, I told my story to another person, and I don't know if it did any good or not, but this is what I mean, a waste of time. Then I thought, I hope I didn't tell this woman too much of my information. But while at the cemetery, the cemetery is flooded. There are ducks swimming in a rain-made pond in baby land six west and as we sat there zoe had an idea to look for this woman's mom's headstone we were looking at the photo posted to compare to the area we were curious as to where it is we didn't find it today but i did ask megan to be with this woman's mother to show us the way before we left the cemetery, I drove back around on the east side and Zoe and I started looking for the headstone again. It wasn't on the east side comparing the area to the picture. So I drove by Megan again 
and drove back around, but this time I drove all the way to the back south street, and as I pulled onto the west side of the cemetery, Zoe is looking on one side, and I looked on the other. After driving by Megan this time, and we didn't find the headstone, we left the cemetery. June 13, 2021. This morning, I'm having a good morning. But then as the day moves on, my doubt of this woman is circling around me. I started second guessing this woman. I just wish she would call, but she hasn't. I just feel the kicks in the teeth are getting to be a bit much. At 9.07 p.m., I did not hear anything from this woman as she claimed she would call. And I got to ask, why does this keep happening? June 14, 2021. Such an emotional morning to have to realize I may have to do this by myself. But you already know, I will. And this is when I started looking for photographers. I found four locally, and then I looked out of state, and I found five in Kansas. And then as my evening is getting later, I've come to a resolution that the ad in the paper will run out for the fourth week, and I haven't heard anything from this woman. And I will call a photographer. And I'm hoping and praying it all works out. June 15, 2021. Today, after my day started, Madison went to the cemetery and sent me a video and pictures of her visit there. The video was of a bunny hopping across the street. And when I see things like this at certain times, I take it as a sign. June 16, 2021. At this time, when I wake up some mornings thinking, why? Other mornings I wake up crying, but this morning I woke up feeling good. I say it like it's uncommon, but I worry about it sometimes because of the way they have done Megan and the others at the cemetery. I mean, how can anyone do this and think nothing of it? At 2.20 p.m., Madison and I went to the cemetery, and there were other vehicles here, so the visit wasn't so nerve-wracking. I drove back to see Wyatt, and it's a peaceful feeling here today. That feeling has become far and in between. We also looked for this woman's mother's headstone again, with no finding it yet. As I pulled up to Megan, the water on the ground is gone, and I did take pictures. Madison then shared with me, when my friend and I came out here yesterday, we cleaned around their areas, and I looked over at her and thanked her. Madison said, he asked me why Megan doesn't have a headstone, and I told him, it's at our house. It's a long story, but knowing my mom, we will all hear about it one day or another. I said, oh yes, everyone will hear of this because I'm not letting this go until it's fixed. Megan did not deserve this. I drove on and left the cemetery. Before I pulled out, I prayed to that woman's mother to help us get this done. I have tears in my eyes as I drove out of the cemetery. And being that it is the fourth week for the ad in the newspaper, it will not run next week. It's sad too because we did not get one response. But if I didn't run the ad, I wouldn't know whether it worked or not. I have taken a major step though. I now know someone else has complained complained of the cemetery flooding. I'm complaining about that too, but my biggest complaint is the headstones were moved by floodwaters. And then to conclude, they dumped the water in a casket they dug up 
under Megan's headstone that was moved and they poured the water on the ground. How would you live with that? But as I know, and that woman said, the city told each of us, no one else is complaining. I've complained. Her mother complained for 11 years. And now this woman has complained. June 17, 2021. Another morning of feeling good waking up. A feeling I was used to until so long ago. But this past week, my feelings are recognizable. I think and I doubt. But then when something else comes to me, I think how the city told her no one else complained and they told me the same thing. They tell everyone the same thing and then make them think they are crazy. They did me and believe me, I have not thought a second thought about proving what I have been saying and because of them denying any of this is on them, not on me. And like I've said, if my story is false, if my story is inaccurate, prove it to me. That's what's crazy. And I have said this from the beginning. Yeah, it may sound crazy, but if you were living it, it certainly would not be. And if I have to be portrayed as being crazy, telling the truth of a story, well, I guess I will be crazy. 8.32 p.m., my phone rang. It is my sister Susie. We talked for hours. We talked of everything. And when it came up about the cemetery, I started crying, sobbing to her. And I told her, I need to know where Megan is. I have to get this fixed to be able to move on and get on with my life. I had a bad day last Wednesday, and I don't ever want to live another day like that again. Susie always has a way to reassure me. And she did say, you are getting there. God knew you were the one to get this done. He knew you have the pictures and you are going to get it now. You're going to do it, sis. And just sitting in quiet for a few minutes, her and I, I did feel better. And thank you, Susie, for everything. June 18, 2021. After starting my day, my mind was on this woman that was so sincere in helping us. I've had a few emotional moments today, but I keep hoping she will help and we can work together on getting this fixed for everyone. I pray she does not give up. She found me, I found her, and we need to find others. And I pray too, she's on the level. Although I did think earlier, this woman has helped me more in the past week than I've had throughout the six years. Let me explain. She's a total stranger. She has a story to, to tell, and so do I. We both know things they've done and what needs to be done. Now she's the only one over all this time and after talking with her and knowing that I am not the only one who complained. Now I pray and wait. And as a few people have told me, the outcome is not as bad as the whole case. You can't give up. You've come too far. And I always have to remind them, there is no giving up. Later this evening, Madison and I went to the cemetery. We sat and visited with Megan and Wyatt, and I took pictures. And yes, Megan's flowers are still here. And to think, it's such a sad situation that the city has created. Why wouldn't they want to fix this? 
June 22nd, 2021. While trying to relax this afternoon, I thought I need to message Jo from the newspaper to let her know I appreciate her time with the ad. At 1.44 p.m. I wrote, Hello Jo, thank you so much for your help with the newspaper ad. I appreciate it all. I will keep your information for future reference. Have a great day. Just a few minutes later, 1.49 p.m., Joe wrote, It's good to hear from you. How have you been? Did you get a good connection with some people? I hope everything is going well. Best wishes, Joe. I responded back, Thank you, Joe. I am doing well. I didn't get the connection I was hoping for, but I will keep moving forward. At 4.35 p.m., we went to the cemetery, and of course things are all right for Wyatt. It hasn't rained much lately, so there's a good sign. Megan's flowers are still here, and you already know I took pictures. June 23, 2021. 9.56 a.m. Patty messaged. She wrote, M. I have been praying we get a call from the newspaper ad. My fingers are crossed. And of course I replied, thank you. 11.55 a.m. my brother John called. He always so caring and concerned. We got into some of the same conversations as Patty and I have had, and John then said, he doesn't do anything until it's time to do it. When he said it, I was quiet, and I realized, I may need to hurry and to get this done. I may cry and stress about it, and I may complain, but in the end, God will do it on his own time. John and I talked for a short time later and hung up. And thank you, John. June 25th, 2021. This morning when I woke up, I didn't think much about anything except to have a good day. I have to stay positive that this woman will help me, help her mom. Help me to help all of us. This evening, Madison, Zoe, and I went to the cemetery. And as I pulled in, I had a sense of people would be here visiting. No one is here. It was all right with me. I could sit and visit with my babies. We sat with Wyatt, and a bit later, we walked to the car to drive around to the west side of the cemetery to visit Megan. When I pull up, we see a new grave covered in Babyland 6 West. I sat there a bit in silence, and of course, I'm crying. And I have to wonder if the newly buried is a loved one to who is already buried, or they just set in a new grave. And then I thought, if it is a loved one of one buried in this area already, they buried this person in the wrong spot. Because all of these headstones south of the existing tree belongs north of the existing tree. But if it is a new grave, then may they rest in peace. We visited with Megan, and of course I took pictures. As, I, as I'm pulling away, I have a sick feeling in the pit of my stomach. I silently said, oh God. 10.34 p.m. I'm thinking about that new grave in Babyland 6 West. The grave is sitting next to a headstone that used to set next to the existing tree, the South Tree. In fact, the headstone that this new grave is sitting next to is not where it should be. Now, Tuesday when we came out, there was no hole dug, so it had to have been dug 
Wednesday or Thursday or Friday before 7.49 p.m. because we are here. Which, yeah, they could have, but for them to bury a wife or a child next to the headstone and know the person is not under that headstone, that is an all-time wow. June 26, 2021. It's been raining. When Madison got off work, we went to the cemetery just to check on things. But man, oh man, I keep praying they didn't bury someone's loved one in the wrong spot. Yes, the stress of this is getting to me. And I know I have to let go and let God. And this is when I get the most emotional. Knowing something and expressing it and no one listening. June 27, 2021. I cried a lot this morning because this is really bothering me. At 2.22 p.m., I had errands to run, so I was able to do that. We did go to the cemetery, and yes, it has water laying on the ground. I took pictures. After visiting with Wyatt, I drove around to see Megan. The dirt pile where they buried someone is getting smaller. The rain is washing it away. It is flooded in Babyland 6 West, and I took more pictures. We left the cemetery, and I took a ride outside of the city, somewhere close but not too close. I guess I just needed to get away to breathe. June 28, 2021. This morning when waking up, I feel a bit nauseated. I feel sick. I pray this woman would call, but I haven't heard from her. 9.11 a.m., Patty called. We didn't talk long, but she was checking on me. She wanted to know if I had heard anything. I told her no, not yet. Patty suggested calling her. See how she acts, Em, what she says. You will know if she's sincere. I said, yeah. I can, and I will. We talked a little longer, and I know I have to stay positive about all of this. I'm praying this woman will call me, and it's rained all day today, so I already know as of what the cemetery looked like yesterday. Today, it will be worse, and I pray Megan's flowers stand up in the ground through all the water. God be with us. June 30th, 2021. This morning I woke up crying. I sleep good when I'm able to fall asleep, but when I wake up, I start to cry. Or I may be crying before I wake up. I know the tears are rolling down my face before I can open my eyes. But I know deep down, way back in the back of my mind, there's no giving up. And when Patty called this afternoon, she asked if I had talked to her yet. I told her no, not yet, but I did remember she told me not until after the 4th of July. Patty then asked me to send her a message to remind her to stop by the VFW hall in her town. And of course I did. And I'm just so weighed down, wanting to help, then the exhaustion of it seems no one else wants to. But after that memory coming back to me, and I mentioned it to Patty when we talked, she said she remembers me telling her the woman asked for after the fourth. And then when I spoke to my sister Susie later this afternoon, she remembered me telling her that too after the conversation the woman and I had. That's when I knew the memory was accurate. I had to second guess it because that night when the woman and I spoke, my head was spinning. Finally, I am talking to someone with a similar story of the cemetery flooding. And yes, at the same cemetery. 
5.44 p.m., Madison and I went to the cemetery. We needed to go because of the rain we'd been getting, and I just felt I needed to be there. We visited with Wyatt, then with Megan. Megan's flowers are still stuck in the ground. And when I saw this, I'm amazed. The water just lays around her flowers and doesn't move them out of the ground. It amazes me. At 6.01 p.m., I took the first picture of the day at the cemetery. And I do at least have to say, it sickens me to think they have buried that person next to a headstone that had been moved by flood water in 2015. And the city has known about it since May 11, 2015, two days after it was discovered, but they chose to ignore it. Thank you for listening. Stay kind with your words.